Greetings, everyone. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. Welcome to a nonfiction book review. In case you don't know, I'm Dave Ringo. If you're a Doctor Who history buff like me, or a book collector, these reviews are designed for you. I'll be taking you through every historical or reference book ever made on the subject of Doctor Who, so that you can decide which ones you want to get. Or, if you want to get them all, which ones are out there. If that sounds appealing, I invite you to subscribe. For my very first review, I wanted to start with one of the major works, a groundbreaking nonfiction book. The first major factual overview of the entire series ever published in hardback. Peter Haining's Doctor Who, A Celebration. If you were a fan of the show back in the early to mid 80s, it would be unusual if you didn't have this one on your shelf. My copy here is from 1984. That's when I bought it. I think it was the first Doctor Who book I ever bought. From what I understand, over 100,000 copies were sold. Its success paved the way for future Doctor Who reference books. Peter Haining was a British author. He spent most of his life in Suffolk, as far as I understand. He died in 2007. He edited a large number of anthologies, predominantly of horror and fantasy short stories. He wrote nonfiction books on a variety of topics, sometimes using the pen names Rick Alexander or Richard Payton. In the 1970s, he wrote three novels. He also wrote several reference books on television programs, including, yes, Doctor Who. This one, his first, is usually considered his best. The standard hardback edition from W.H. Allen was published in September 1983, two months before the 20th anniversary special. A leather-bound slipcase limited edition from W.H. Allen also appeared that same month. A soft cover edition was published at the same time by Cornet Books. It was reprinted in 1983 and twice in 1984. Now, a large format paperback edition in blue from Virgin Publishing came out in July of 1995. There are 256 pages in the book. Looking at the table of contents, what you're going to see here is a number of essays on each of the doctors by Peter Haining, and then an essay by each of the doctors. Now, we're talking about the first five doctors. But William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, John Pertwee, Don Baker, and Peter Davison all have essays in this book. Now you might be wondering, how is it possible that William Hartnell, who was dead at the time the book came out, how could he possibly have an essay in here? But the essay that they have for him in here was compiled by Peter Haining from several interviews in other sources and then uh, edited together into a single essay. It actually reads rather smoothly. We've got a, a, a chapter on K-9. Uh, we've got a chapter on Peter Cushing as the doctor, about Gallifrey, about the master, and we've even got uh, essays by some of the makers of Doctor Who, including Verity Lambert, a chapter here on how we created Doctor Who. We've got uh, Barry Letts, we have Terence Dix, and John Nathan Turner, all who have contributed uh, to this book. Terry Nation has uh, an article here on the Daleks. Uh, we've got an episode guide. Uh, the 20 year travelogue that was uh, actually contributed by Jeremy Bentham. And in the, in the very back, the Doctor Who film archives letting us know uh, what the missing episodes were at the time. There were 134 missing episodes back then. 134! And for many of us, this was the first time we even found out about it. And it was disappointing to say the least. Today there are 97 missing episodes, at least the time that this is recorded. So that's. Um, 37 episodes that have been recovered since. Hmm. Not bad. Okay, now, is the book worth getting today if you don't already have it? Well, we've got some pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros first. The pros of the book. The pros of the book. <laughs> Get it? The pro. So, the interviews. These essays here, they're not found anywhere else. If you're interested in interviews and you like the doctors, there's these essays written by the doctors themselves. So for that reason, it might be worth getting. Also, the essays by some of the producers and writers for the show. Uh, another thing that you might like in the book is the, um, the companion descriptions. The only thing is, it only goes up through the Peter Davison years, not even completely through, it's just up to the 20th anniversary. So you don't get any descriptions of the companions after that. Uh, we have some 
you know, color imagery in the book, some, some nice, uh, in the, a centerpiece with some of the, uh, some cool photos. But they're a little grainy. You could probably find better, uh, more cleaned up copies on the internet. And I should add that another one of the pros is that Peter Haining is a good writer, so it's entertaining to read his essays. Um, the cons are, of course, the things that are out of date. You know, if you're, if you're going for the latest on anything having to do with Doctor Who, this book is not the book to get. You have these descriptions of Doctor Who fan clubs, which is kind of cool for history's sake. But, of course, some of them are defunct now. <laughs> the Doctor Who fan club of America. Do you remember them? Probably not. They were a thing in the 80s. I think I might even have a couple of their newsletters in the garage. But, uh... Yeah, they were kind of like the American version of the, the Doctor Who Appreciation Society. Unfortunately, they fizzled out. So there are basically two reasons to get the book. One, <laughs> one, if you're interested in the interviews, and two, if you just so happen to want all the major works. This is one of the biggies, so it's a good one to have. But then again, when it comes to older books like this, you might say, well, it's completely out of date. What good is it anymore? You have to remind yourself that, well, at least if you're thinking of about the history of the show, sometimes it's nice to have something that gives you a sort of snapshot into what it was like back then, um, gives you a feel for the state of fandom, the state of the show at the time. So for that reason, it still might be nice to have. Right, Darwin? I know. That's just what I was telling them. See? Now, where can you get the book? Is it still available? It came out in 1983, 1984. The latest one was 1995. Is it still available? Yes, it is. I found it online for you. I put a few links below, so in the description you can check out uh, some places to get it. Mainly I've got Amazon uh, links uh, where you can buy from other sellers, of course, through Amazon. And depending on what country you're in, I put a different link for each country. Well, that's it for today's book review, but I'll have another one coming out in a few days. If you want to be notified when it comes out, uh, just hit the bell next to the subscribe button and you'll be sent a notification email. Until then, I'm Dave Ringo. Happy travels in time and space.